Hi folks, Joel Self, Outdoor Instructor here, and today's video is going to be all about how we install guide plates into our anchor and how we use them to belay. Let's get straight into it. So the guide plate we're going to be using today is the Kong GG. Um, plenty of belay devices out there that have a guide function to them, so doesn't have to be one of these. Um, this is just my go-to guide plate. It's really nice and simple, single plate of metal with four holes in it. it got no bells no whistles does what it says on the tin and I just love it it just really nice device uh, and it happens to color code quite nicely with two of my other carabiners so when this is on my harness I can just glance around easily see that's what I want or when it's in an anchor it doesn't get confused with all oh, that carabiner belongs to that thing or that other thing you know it's clearly for the belay device um, and I know when I can take that in and out of the system um, without getting confusion going on so that's my guide plate of choice. Whatever you've got should work along similar lines to this one. As you'll have seen when I just took this off my harness, we've got a couple of things going on here. It's not just a simple guide plate. We have um, two HMS carabiners, one clipped to another, and the guide plate. That's because our guide plate only works in guide mode when we have got two carabiners to attach to it. So unlike belaying off your harness with this normally, uh, where you only need one carabiner, this will take an extra one, it needs to be a HMS in my book. And um, you are going to be belaying directly off of the anchor, not off of your harness. So you're sort of partially out of the system um, to start things off, which can be helpful, certainly if you get into sort of self-rescue stuff, which we might have some videos coming out about um, at some point soon. But we'll get straight into this, how we set it up. Um, and how it gets involved in here, how it interacts with the rope, and what we as belayers need to think about doing with it. My main carabiner that everything's clipped to, I'm just gonna clip that into the anchor quickly. Um, ordinarily, before I've got this off my harness, I will have tied it into the anchor. So I'm just gonna pop a quick clove hitch on here so that I'm nice and safe. There we go. And it's just sort of habit that when I get to a stance, I will tie myself onto the anchor and then I'll take the belay device off particularly if I'm going to use it in guide mode and just stick it on the anchor before I shout safe. It means that when I pull up the rope my belay doesn't feel like they're waiting a long time before they get on the rock. It feels a bit more fluid for them I think um, although it may take a couple of extra seconds on the on the lead um, but they know during that time that I'm probably just faffing with an anchor or something so I'm quite happy for it to be that way around. Um, just my own little preference. So now that I'm safe, I shout safe, and then I can start pulling up all the rope from my B layer, um, who's now going to become my second, of course, waiting for them to tell me that I'm off B layer. Once the rope goes tight against them and they shout, that's me. That's me. There we go. Um, we'll take our rope and we're going to clip it into the guide plate, making sure that as our rope sits in a bike like this, the rope that's on top that higher strand, that's the one that goes down to our climber. And the bottom strand here is our dead rope. And as a B-layer, that's going to be really important. So we're just going to put that straight through the device. We'll take off our higher HMS carabiner. Close it all up. Make sure the one on the anchor is closed. And setting up your guide plate is as simple as that. That is ready to rock and roll. The way that a guide plate operates differently to our normal plate is that as the climber sits down or falls off, does whatever, it's actually gonna pinch our brake strand underneath, which creates a lot of friction for us. Now I've seen people go hands-free on these when their mate's climbing up and they start taking photos and things. And in my book, you need to always have a hand on the end of that dead rope. I, in fact, I think, I don't know why I said in my book, you just, you do. You absolutely should have your hand on that dead end all the time. And if you're going to need to take your hand off, or you just want to take that photograph, whatever the case may be, um, then just take the time to pop a, an overhand on a bike in the dead rope. It's just a nice chunky knot that's not going to pass through there. So even if this did slip, um, which I appreciate is unlikely, um, but there are weird things that can happen when you know, you're not belaying a uh, climber from directly below if they're coming in from an angle up to the belay then you can sort of get twisting and things going on in here and that could force the device to release. Um, but yeah, if you're going hands-free, 
pop a knot in, take seconds and could, you know, save somebody's life effectively. So in my book, let's have hands on the dead end all the time. To be lay on this, we're going to have one hand on the climber's strand, one hand on the brake side. And we're just going to pull down on the brake side and up on the climber's side. And then I'm just going to walk my hands up the brake rope because I can let go of the climber's side as much as I like. It's that brake strand that we need to make sure we keep hold of. There we go. When and where should you be using a guide plate? I think is a, an important thing to cover. I will only belay people with a guide plate in guide mode on terrain where I'm fairly happy they're not on a fall off. Just because these devices are a bit of a pain to release, um, there's lots of funky things you can do to relieve tension um, and sort of we won't get into that now. I might do a separate video on releasing a guide plate um, because there's a few things to take into account and a few different design features on different devices that may um, come into play with that. But for our belaying, we just need to make sure that we are happy. Our climber is going to be comfortable on the terrain. There's a low risk of um, falling, needing to be lowered. Um, and I think this is really efficient. But I know that if I was going to take um, a child out climbing or someone who's maybe a bit new to climbing, I might not use this because they might sort of step up somewhere, go, oh, don't like that hold, and just want to take that step down. And the, the fact that some of these devices can cause, not particularly the GG, actually, I think this one's really quite good, but some devices are really clunky to give slack on, um, even if it's just for someone to step down one move. And so I tend to only use this with people who are more confident and who are going to sort of pick a line and stick to it um, because you don't just have to have someone want to you know bin bin off and then you've got to lower them down to the terrain where they can get back on you also have to deal with people who just want to step down that move so yeah I take this device out with me all the time it's my normal belay device but I tend not to use it in guide mode unless I'm happy that my second is going to be really confident on the terrain um, and just sort of bimble through it this also is quite good, I've found sort of the opposite of what I've just said. Um, really quite good with my more competent climbing partners when we're on really long days because it's really efficient and quick to set up, which is brill, saves us loads of time. But also, um, it can be easily turned into a hauling system. Um, again, not something I'm going to cover in this video, but I have found that, um, yeah, there have been days where I have needed to do that to maybe give a friend some assistance through a particular move um, and normally you're talking about hauling someone you know a couple of feet towards the end of the pitch where the rope drag is not too bad um, if you're trying to haul someone who's 20 meters below you it's going to take a long time to get any progress and it's not going to help you or them so all stuff worth considering um, guide plate super cool bit of kit really really useful um, if you I've got a competent second who's just going to run through the pitches together. I love them. I think they're brilliant. Key thing is we're clipping them in to a nice solid part of the anchor. So here we've gone through both loops, one going up to each piece of gear. Um, so we're through the shelf. We could have this in a master point, um, but you want to have it fairly high, I find, for it to be ergonomic to use. If it starts getting really low down here and you're sort of bending over to, to use the rope, it gets a real faff. Um, my general rule is that I want it at about shoulder to lower rib height. So this one, about lower rib, um, but ideally I'd have it slightly higher up in front of me so I can use it. And then when it comes to releasing it, if that's needed, then it's sort of all right at eye level a bit more and a bit easier to see what's going on sometimes. So all stuff worth bearing in mind. I hope that was helpful for you. I've been Joel Outdoor Instructor. If you've got any questions, do let me know. Uh, but for now, goodbye.